I was singing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles song. Actually, testing, testing. Okay. All right, just make. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't check the mic before I hit the go live thing. So, I wanted to make sure the mic was actually working. I mean, I was, I was pretty sure it was. I've done this now a few times, so you would hope that I would know how to do that. But then again, I know how I am. So, just wanted to make sure. But the mic is indeed working. Happy Tuesday, everybody. The Let's see, today and tomorrow are supposed to be about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's just going to be really hot for about six days. They're projecting 110 on Saturday or Sunday. So fairly safe to say I probably won't be streaming again this week because I won't be too thrilled with the heat. Therefore, probably just tonight. Probably, uh, unless it really cools down one night where I have a block of time. But I'm really not counting on that, so this will probably be it for the... I mean, luckily, it's not too bad right now. It's about 90, which, don't get me wrong, isn't great. I don't like that weather. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's 89. Sorry. So, but still, it's... Yeah, today and tomorrow... Yeah, it's... Tomorrow will be in the mid-90s. Uh, this is your weather report by the by the uh, by for Northern California. Then yeah, it's going to jump straight to 104. So is what they're projecting now. It could always be higher. 104 is Thursday. 102, 105, 107, and then I believe so. It was that Saturday. So it looks like Sunday is going to be the big day. Oh here here you go here here's a 15 day for you. Ready? This is all in Fahrenheit by the way. Starting on Thursday. So welcome to September. September, when it's supposed to be fall. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Starting on September 1st. 104. 102. 106. 108. 112. 112, they're saying, for Monday. Welcome to the week. 109. 105. 100. Then it drops to, oh, just the 90s. Oh, man. I mean, ay. the only, only positive is that since the sun, sorry about that, since the sun tends to go down faster, in theory, it should cool off quicker. But I don't know if I even believe that. We'll see if we get that lucky. So, oh. man, I just, ay. I just, I'm sick of the heat. I'm really I'm just sick of the heat. And it just never gets any better every year. And it's, I mean, I shouldn't, I actually shouldn't complain. This is probably only the second, <laughs> only the second stretch of hundred plus for more than a few days that we've had. It's not as bad as it was maybe two years ago where we had a whole bunch of hundred plus stretches, but still in September, September, we're going to go through this, and, it, and you know, it's only going to get worse. It's just going to keep getting hotter and hotter every year, and it's going to last longer and longer. And with fires and everything, again, we got lucky, but that doesn't mean that tomorrow there won't be a huge one. <sighs> anyway, sorry. I'm not trying to dwell on negative stuff. That's not usually the goal of the streams, is to be happy and do artwork. But it's tough when you know, I mean, it's it's just like you can see the the steamroller coming down the street at you and you know you're just gonna have to you know get your foot crushed so i'm gonna get a quick drink of water here and frankly what makes some of it so bad is we just had a stretch that ended yesterday because today was i mean today wasn't too bad but we just had a stretch of three or four really nice days where particularly in the first half of the day it was just beautiful out. I mean, it was really nice. There were some clouds in the sky, so the, the sun wasn't too bad. The heat wasn't too much. I sound like an old person. I guess I am. But ah, I can't take the heat. Anyway, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to be doing some alley rat work tonight because I was working on that a little bit earlier today. And uh, I want to continue that work. So... Let's go ahead and do our little starting soon thing. Wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Before I do that, hold on. Stop the presses. This is just going to take an extra minute, but I can do this behind the scenes. I forgot. I did a sped up version of the opening. 
let me find that because it'll only take me a second to bring that over. Here it is. Let's move that into there and make sure it carried over. It did. So I'm going to do, oh, whatever. You can just see what I'm doing. I don't, I don't really care. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say edit. I mean, I, this is, I guess, behind the scenes if you want to see. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the media. Oops, I didn't mean to. And we're going to change the media to say we're going to make that opening art volume two. We'll select that. We will save that. Now let's go back to here. All right. And now let's pretend that no, that just happened. So we're going to do it right from the, see how fast it was? Wasn't that, oh, let me just eject this drive. I hate when I forget to, the one thing about Max that's annoying is that you have to eject the drive or it gets very angry at you. So I want to make sure I eject the drive. Windows doesn't yell at you. I was told that actually it doesn't like it either, but at least I'll give Microsoft this. It's nice enough not to scream in my face about it. Anyhow, here we go. This should be much faster. Let's see. Okay. Come on. I think I did this right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Much better and faster. This is maybe 20 seconds top to bottom. See those animations look better when they're quicker. Let's see. I don't even know if it's 20 seconds. It might be 15. Oh, no, it's 20 because it's going to fade out. Okay, perfect. Much better. Faster, looks better, and it doesn't just stretch out because I think it's now less than half the time. So yeah, uh, that's going to be now the new opening going forward. So there you go. Well worth waiting that 16 seconds for. What a beauty. Okay, so back to our, this is the hat hole alley rat drawing that I'm doing based on the alley rat from uh, Brian Q's hat hole home video outros, which actually this rat, when I first did it, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but the more I look at it, the more I'm actually kind of liking it. Cause it's just kind of a, it it's, I'm trying to thread it. Oh, before I forget, before I forget, before, and actually I'll save it for the end. Sorry. Sorry. I'm being a little bit of a pinball. I'll save it for the, actually, no, I can say it at the beginning and I'll say it at the end for those people who watch this, whether it's now live or later, there's nobody watching it right now. So I'm just going to say this in general for anybody who might watch it later. And I will probably post this on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, it's really the only place I post things. So sorry if you're not on Twitter, you're not going to see it. I will, uh, I wanted to invite parents who have children to actually draw squiggles and I will draw on their squiggles. So you can have your kids do a squiggle on a paper and or you can either do it digitally if you if you have a tablet and you want to have them use a, a their finger or a, a stylus, make a squiggle. Really doesn't matter how complex or not it is, it won't matter. Uh, or they can do it on paper with either pencil or pen. And if you just take a picture of it and you can send it to, oh, I didn't realize my email address isn't on this. Oh, it's easy though. It's just, okay, you notice how everything across the top is Ozone Art Foundry? It's that at gmail.com. So it's very simple. So if you want to have you, and I'll say this again at the end in case you missed the beginning or, you know, um, jump into the stream later. So you won't miss anything. But for those who are watching it later, you're going to hear it twice. If you want to have your kids draw a squiggle and send it to me, ozoneartfoundry at gmail.com. Just take any of the above addresses and put at gmail.com at the end. And now I'm noticing that the dot in .com is not properly centered. So that's going to bug me until I fix it. Anyway, send me that on that email and you can just, you know, title the email. I mean, I read my emails. Most of the stuff, I even, I always check the spam folder too, but just go ahead and put uh, squiggle drawing or child squiggle or squiggle art or something with the word squiggle. And that way I'll know what it is. And then I'll take those and I'll put them up on the screen. Then you can watch it with your kids and you can watch me draw on their squiggle stuff and they can follow along or they can do whatever they want. That's the nice part. So anyway, yeah, squiggle drawings. I will do those. If you have kids and you want to send a squiggle, I will draw on their squiggle. Okay. So, hat hole home video rat. So, alley rat here. So, I've done, obviously, some of this work from the last time we've seen it. I went ahead and did some actually earlier today. So, what I actually have done is some of the shadow work. And you can see that. See, you can see where the pencils are. So, I did, I did basically shadows with pencils. And then I came in and... Where is that one? There's another shadow in here. Where is it? Oh, it's there. I'm going to go ahead and group these shadows up because they're really... Yeah, those are supposed to be basically black layers, so we could just go ahead and... Oh, wait, 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 wait. One of them was a different uh, opacity. Let's make those the same. Let's merge it down, and then we can fade this out. So if you look, you can actually see here that I took the pencil and basically did a darker gray around that, and then I'm going to use... So I'm going to fill these in, 
this stuff in. I'm going to turn the eye off so that you can see the black eye there. And I'm going to, and I'll do the same thing with other stuff, but right now I'm primarily focusing on the actual rat body. And I'm going to fill it in with, a, with the dark gray color that you see here. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to try out the taper pen and I'm going to use that for kind of accents on the shadows. And I'll show you what I mean as I'm doing that. So let's go ahead and jump in here. So I believe I have the correct color already. Let's verify what you can do by doing stuff like this and then just move back into the gray. I'll do it in the center of the X. Yes. And that should be in my recent colors. It is there. So let's go ahead and find that gray layer. As you can see, I didn't name them. So let's go ahead and name them because it's a good habit. Blacks. I believe these are whites. So rename. Uh, what is that? What is that line? Is that? What? Wow, what is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Um, uh, dark skin reds. And then this must be light skin reds. Okay. Light skin reds. Okay. This is dark skin grays. Dark skin gray. Oops. I'm going to use the Americanized gray. And then I will use the light skin gray. Because I think so. Isn't, isn't EY British? Is it not? I don't know. I've seen it spelled both ways. Uh, we'll call this nail color. Well, I should say light nail color because I will be darkening all this stuff. Light nail colors. Now, these I'm just going to group together because they are, in fact, the burger. Boop, bink. And we'll call this burger colors. We'll worry about naming the rest of those. Well, no, we won't. We'll do it now. Bun light. Yeah, that's fine. Or we'll say, I guess I'll do my same naming convention. Light bun. Uh, we'll say light. Actually, I'm not going to darken that because it's already pretty dark. Burger. Uh, let's do light lettuce. Okay, and then we will do light catsup. I always liked catsup. I mean, I never say it. I always say ketchup, but catsup. I like it. Um, we can actually put those at the bottom. That will not interfere with the feet. And we'll say light... Uh, um, yeah, I guess it would be feet because they don't really have hands. Light feet color. Uh, which reminds me, I actually forgot to do, <laughs> I didn't do the colors for the, I mean, they're feet, but hands, you know, these, this, oh, I did them gray. I wasn't even paying attention. Oh boy. I'm a, uh, I'm a fool. So actually you get to see me fix this. All right, let's, let's do this intelligently. We're going to turn off the pencil lines cause we don't need them. We're going to turn off, uh, let's go find the. The dark skin grays actually have to come off of here. Or you know what? No, they don't. I'm going to turn them off for a minute, and I'm just going to focus on this. So let's go to the light skin, because I'm just going to use those as a template for... Uh, do I need to do that? I'm thinking. I'm thinking as I'm erasing, so just give me a minute. I'm trying to think of how I want to handle this. Ooh, that is a very, very, very thin brush or a pen. So we'll have to mess with that a little bit, but that's okay. I, I just don't know what I don't know what I was thinking there because I just did the grays when I actually intend for these to be a different color. But I think it's just because I was doing it all at once, so I wasn't really paying close attention. That's fine. These are easily fixed in digital. Again, I will. This is my uh, yet again saying this is why I like digital. Digital makes fixing these types of little mental errors very simple. Tougher to do on paper. Not impossible. You absolutely can do it. So I don't want to come off like I'm anti-traditional media because I'm really not. I'm actually probably in the next few weeks I am going to actually try to do a large-scale uh, traditional image, which I have not done in a long time. I mean, to the point where I'm actually kind of you know, got to figure out how I'm going to, I no, no, I don't, I, I shouldn't say it like that. It's not, it is like riding a bike when you, when you've worked, cause I worked most of my adult life in traditional media, I will be able to jump back into it. So I'm saying this, I think I'm just kind of, 
I'm a little apprehensive about it only because, you know, I, the one bad thing about working in digital so much is I'm used to being able to fix my errors, which I will not be able to do at least as easily, depending on what the error is, on pen and paper. But you know what? I've said many times that the one of the things that you judge an artist by is the ability to adapt to mistakes. So guess what? I'm going to have to live by what I said. And you know what? Not a bad thing. It's a good thing to be practicing again because, you know, there, there are benefits to working in traditional media. I will have something tangible. I am going to use, which I have never, well, I shouldn't say never, which I have not done since I was, I mean, we're talking probably in 20 years since I have, I'm going to lay down because I want to do a actual physical version of the magic card that I did, the Shieldred card. I really do want to have a physical, because I, I, I really, I really think that image came out well. And I think I want to make a, a physical version of it. And so, which is going to be a little tricky because the card image is done in a stained glass style. And I really don't know how I'm going to manage that in traditional media. So there's some stuff I'll have to figure out, but I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm sure I can work that type of thing out one way or another, and I will. Um, let me just make sure I didn't bleed over anywhere in here. It doesn't look like I did. Okay. So let's jump back to this. But that'll be fun. So I'm going to plan to do that after the heat because I'm going to have to work under a light for that. And if it's 140,000 degrees, yeah, I'm not going to be wanting to be under a hot light for that. So, yeah, it's not going to be right away. And I don't, I don't think I'll be able to stream that, unfortunately, because I don't know how. I, I, the mic part isn't the problem. It'd be doing the camera properly. I really don't know how I would be able to position a camera. So that, and because of the way I work in traditional, I, I'm not even sure you'd be able to see much because I generally hunch over very close to the actual image. So I don't know if that would even be... I don't even know if that would work out really well for trying to do a stream. I don't think. I mean, I may take a, a very quick look at that and see if there's a way that makes sense. But, I mean, I'm not a camera pro either, so it's I, I have a tripod, but I've never set that desk. The, stand, the, the drawing desk has never been configured properly for anything like that, so I don't know that I'm going to stream that. I really don't. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know how I would do it. So, and that's fine. I'll have these streams still. Even when I'm doing that, I'm not going to stop doing the regular streams. So you'll, oh crap, did I just do that on the wrong? Hold on. Okay. I don't know. I, th I did it right. Okay. Um, so I'll still be doing the regular streams. You won't, you won't suddenly not have the regular streams anymore. But um, there we go. But I just don't know how I would actually, I don't know that I could get the desk properly done for that, which is a shame because I, I, I actually do think there's a value in seeing how the traditional stuff is done and watching that because it is a much different process. But if I can figure something out, I will try. You know, I, I may, I just, even, even the cell phone, I don't know if that's going to really work. Uh, I, I just think it's going to be very complicated. Unless I can somehow, I don't know. I, 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 will, I, will, I will look to see if there is a, practical way that I can stream doing the traditional drawing. If there is, I will be happy to do it. If there's not, then that's okay. You'll have this. So you, you will have some kind of stream, just not necessarily that. So, and, I, and I think that's fine. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I'll, of course, show you when it's done. Um, just don't know how I would do it. I'm, I'm trying to workshop it in my head now, which is, you know, I, I, I can't figure it out. Okay, so... Now we have our colors correct. Uh, we fixed the skin problem, not skin problem, but the skin tone is now on there. So now let's bring our dark screen, dark screen, dark screen, sure. 
Now I'm going to do one thing. I'll show you how I did all this other stuff, which is very, very simple. It's kind of a cheat method. Not cheat. It's just a way to do it. So I'm taking color that I already used and I'm putting it right there. Now that's on its own layer right here. Now I'm going to come into the brightness and I'm going to step it down. Uh, I think 45 is a good, yeah, that's a good amount. All right. And then I'm going to resample the color. I'm going to erase what was there. And then I'm going to uh, pick this pen and I'm going to trace over. I'm on the right layer. Yes. I'm going to trace over these lot. Oh, well, I guess I can't see them because they're, I'm going to do this just for now. I'll move it back down in a minute, but we're going to trace over these lines in the dark skin color because I did that wrong before. So just for these areas, everything else is right, but I wasn't thinking with the, the, uh, uh, four paws, four feet. What do you call the front feet of a rat? I actually don't know. Whatever you call the front feet of a rat. Cause I, I mean, you, you have to distinguish between front and back, right? You'd have to. Okay. That should be, oh no, it's not. Uh, let's see where, oh, I didn't do the, I did. I was smart enough not to do it on the bottom ones. Boy, that's so odd, but whatever. So I knew enough not to do it. Oh, because the color was already here. I'm sitting here going, why would I not have done it? Because the color, the foot color was already present. Therefore, I knew not to do that. So we'll do that. And let's go ahead and follow this line like that. Okay. Uh, you know what? None of the other ones have this little shadow. So we'll get rid of that. Thank you. And then we'll do this one. We're just following those lines. You can kind of see what I'm doing. This is not all that mysterious and why are the two showing up where's the other thing that's showing up there because that's it's interrupting my my way out oh, there it is okay there we go because i guess i just turned all the shadows back on okay and we'll bring this down and around and the, the uh fur should cast some kind of shadow so let's go ahead and do this and that and that that no not that that's too soft that 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 and there we go and we'll do that okay x there let's do we already got a shadow there so we'll do a little bit of a shadow here like this like this i'm not too worried about these being extremely accurate so okay there we go all right so that's all of our shadow lines are done. So I'm going to now take this and move it down to here. And we'll call this dark feet color. Or color, I guess. I like to keep my wording consistent. Rename. Yeah, oh, rename. Let's do this. Okay. Delete. Thank you. Now turn those off and on the dark skin grays we will erase what's on the hands oh, let's turn the sketches off make it easier so make it easier to see what i'm doing okay okay oops uh where are the light dark skin right there okay don't have to do too much of this because i only did it a few places so just get rid of these get rid of that Okay, there we go. That also confirms that I did all the ones I missed before. Excellent. Okay, now we're ready to go. So now we're going to do a fill-in of the dark grays. That's where we were originally going when I realized I'd made a mistake. So we're going to take the small pen for these, these angled elements here. We'll just do this just to fill in the sharp areas. Right before I started streaming, I was watching a review of the at least as of this stream, the newly released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, <clears throat> pardon me, which I will be purchasing at some point in the near future. I'm going to add a shadow right there. Ooh, not like that, though. That doesn't follow the curve correctly. There we are. Because my wife and I played the Shredder's Revenge game, and we liked it quite a bit. And... There's at least the two arcade games in the... And I like the old Nintendo game, even though a lot, a lot of people hate it. And it is extraordinarily difficult, but that's the nice part about these modern collections is they often have ways to mitigate that difficulty. You know, anybody who played the old... Which, of course, this dates me horrifically, but... Anybody who played the old Nintendo game remembers the water level. Everybody hates the water level. And rightly so. But now, if you you know, get injured or die in the level, you can just reverse it and you'll be fine. So 
And I realized I should have filled that in. Okay. So, yeah, I'll be getting that. I, I, I have a soft spot for the turtles. They were actually... The, the turtles were the first thing... The first characters that I used to regularly draw when I was very young. Take a drink of water, so one second, please. Ah, there we go. Yeah, turtles, I, I, I can still draw the kind of turtle head exactly the way I did when I was very young, like in high school and before. I think my oldest, the oldest drawing I really have that isn't really young, you know, like finger painting young stuff, is a turtle. I drew it in my yearbook. I drew it in everybody's yearbook, actually, I remember. Everybody whose yearbook I signed got a turtle. So those are floating around somewhere. Let's fill that in because I obviously missed a little bit of that. There we go. But yeah, I love the turtles. I, um, I remember reading the comics and now I'm talking about the original comics. And those were decidedly adult comics in many ways. So that was kind of a thing, but my mom didn't realize that because they looked cartoony. So, and this is a common thing, is a lot of times if your parent doesn't realize, if, if your parent thinks that what you're looking at appears to be a kid, kiddie type of thing, they don't look too close. You can actually end up watching or reading or seeing things that maybe your parents don't think you're old enough to see. That's, that has been the case, I think, forever. And probably will be the case forever, no matter how much monitoring and how much, you know, rating systems and everything you do. There's always going to be this this gray area where parents are going to miss something because it appears to be kid friendly. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think, you know, that th th there's there is a. What is the word for it? I don't want to encourage disobedience of parents' rules or anything like that because I understand rules are important and that many times parents put rules into place thinking that they are doing the smart thing for their children to protect them and often are protecting them from things that they would not understand at a young age. So there is, don't get me wrong, I don't think the kids should just look at everything and see everything. There are things that I saw when I was younger that I probably would have been better off waiting to see until later because I would have comprehended them a little bit better. But regardless, there is also a gray area where once in a while it's not a bad thing for a kid to see something that somebody has decided might be a little too old for them, within reason. And for me, that was the original Turtles comic books, which, you know, if you only knew the cartoon or you only know kind of the more kid-friendly version, the original comics were, <clears throat> pardon me, definitely more adult-oriented in many ways, particularly in violence. So, you know, they were a little bit harsher, certainly than the cartoon ever was, if that's all you've ever seen, whichever version cartoon, I'm pretty sure none of them have ever gotten as, you know, with blood and swords and stuff, the way that the original comics were. And I thought that was great because I never, you know, I grew up on Marvel and DC comics. Now, yes, there were Vertigo comics. There were comics that were oriented towards adults. Absolutely, those existed. Uh, but in general, in general, places I would go to get comic books did not have those comics. They instead had the more kind of, I don't know what you would term them, the, the tamer or the more straightforward comics. So you wouldn't see a lot of Vertigo stuff in the places that I got comics. You know, you saw the more straightforward, you know, normal, or not normal, but the the more restrained, better word, restrained version of comics. So yes, Vertigo existed. And Vertigo, for those who don't know, I don't think it, it does not exist anymore, at least not the way it did. Vertigo is DC's, or was DC's, uh, what's the word for it? They're kind of, they're more adult line of comics. They're more mature line. Oh, there we go. There's the word. The more mature line of DC comics is Vertigo. Yes, indeed. And so... I didn't read a lot of those when I was younger. Instead, I got the normal comics. But again, the Turtles, the Turtles escaped the normal watchful eye of my parents because the idea is silly. Ninja Turtles is a silly idea. And so they didn't really look too hard at the fact that, you know, I, they didn't flip through the comics because I'm sure that they thought, oh, this is just a silly kid's idea of... You know, this is going to be a bunch of 
goofy cartoons of turtles just running around and, and kicking things and oh maybe they'll fight you know lizards or something like that but they weren't they weren't paying attention they certainly didn't leaf through the comics and go oh wait a minute this is this is being treated as a serious kind of martial arts story where there is actual injury and serious injuries and people are using swords and they're not just banging the swords together they're cutting each other with them and so yeah i got to read the original comics and i found them to be because i was used to the cartoon you know that because i didn't i didn't read the comics when they first came out those were not comics you just found anywhere but then there was a point where when i got into the turtles i was reading the original ones and that's why i used to draw them with all the same headband colors because that was the original idea is they didn't have different headband colors. They all had the same one. They all had different names and they all used different weapons. That was their distinctive, that those were the distinguishing elements, but they did not have different headband colors. The cartoon, and this makes sense. You do this for kids. It makes them easy to identify. The, the cartoon gave them different colors. And so that's where most people are used to the way the colors work from the, from the actual cartoon as opposed to the original comic, which, and this is a thing I actually like about it, is it didn't distinguish them that way. Instead, they were distinguished by weapon choices, which were reflections of their personalities. And that's what I like about them. So instead of making it something really obvious, which of course was the color of the, the I, don't, I don't know if there's a formal name for the headbands they had on. I imagine there must be, but I don't know what it is. So instead of using, I'll just call them the headbands, the headband colors as, way to, as ways to very quickly telegraph to a reader or the audience that, oh, these are different turtles because they have different colors, you know, which you would also sort of, I don't know, did they ever explicitly say that those were supposed to be their favorite colors? I mean, you just sort of naturally think they must be, but I don't think they ever actually said that. But, you w but th that's visual kind of information being conveyed. You would think that if I'm wearing an orange headband all the time, that orange, uh, Michelangelo, of course, that Michelangelo was always my favorite. Uh, uh, my, not only because he's named after one of my favorite artists of all time, which is actually the actual Michelangelo who sculpted the David and painted the Sistine Chapel and famously destroyed a lot of his work. So I sympathize with that particular mentality. Uh, but also because he was using nunchucks, which I thought were the neatest weapons. I mean, most people, they defer to Leonardo. Leonardo, Leonardo was absolutely supposed to be the kind of every person version. You know, he was the all around her, the leader. So most people liked Michael and or, uh, Leonardo and that's fine. That's fine. I don't have anything against Leonardo. Perfectly good turtle, you know, swords, classic, so classic weapon, you know, tried and true. Sure. Especially when you're getting into ninjas and samurais and that type of thing, you, you know, you're, somebody's gonna have to have a sword. I get it. I understand it. Uh, but I was not really drawn to the sword. Donatello was probably my second favorite. Uh, Raphael, I don't like size. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I've never liked short weapons. I'm not a short weapons person. Uh, I don't know why. Probably because I know that I'm no good up close. I'm actually a coward. Therefore, if somebody gets close enough that I have to use small weapons to fight them, yeah, I'm finished. So I like weapons where I can be a little ways away and kind of poke at them, you know? So the, so actually, I don't know why the nunchuck, I, yeah, actually the nunchucks appeal to me because they're very visual. They're very kinetic. They're very in motion. You're always spinning them. There's something that's very, very satisfying about watching uh, nunchucks spinning. So that's the kind of immediate appeal is, oh, they're spinny. They're spinny things. So for a juvenile mind like myself, spinny things are like cats and yarn. I just gravitate towards spinny motion stuff. So that's why I'm sure I like nunchucks. And I also like Michelangelo's kind of attitude. Um, but, you know, I, where was I going with this when I started this? I said Michelangelo, who was my favorite turtle. Oh, so I was using him as an example. So, so I guess orange, if that's his color, uh, must be his favorite color. Again, that's what you would think if you see a character who's always wearing the same color, you sort of guess that they can't hate that color too much. You know, especially when their other characters are all always wearing the same colors too. So by that logic, Donatello's favorite color would be purple. Leonardo's favorite color would be um, uh, blue. And then Raphael, who does have the best color, which is red, because I really love red as a color. He does have the best color. But yeah, Raphael and Raphael was always kind of the hothead, which, you know, yeah. So Raphael was never, I think was probably always my least favorite because he was always kind of the, the you know, the, just the bruiser hothead. And um, yeah, so he never really appealed to me. But I, I actually like in the comics how each of them, and in the, in the cartoon, they all have different personalities. I don't really dislike any of them. 
But of them all, I would probably go Michelangelo is my favorite one. Then it would go to Donatello. Because I do like the bow. I like the, you know, or stick, whatever you want to call it, his staff. And he was always portrayed as kind of the intelligent, technologically minded one, which I always like computers and technology, so that also kind of fit. And, uh, but I think Michelangelo I liked because, A, I, I loved his name, a uh, very classic artist name. Um, and, and this, this is, I guess, a little psychological insight into me, he was very different than I actually was. He was somebody I wanted to be, especially when I was younger, because he was the life of the party, and I never was. I was never somebody who was, you know, and I still am not. I'm not a party person. I'm not somebody who does well in large groups. I tend to be amazingly, or maybe not amazingly, maybe this is why I do things like streams where you don't see my face. That maybe tells you something. I'm a shy person, believe it or not. When, when, I, when I'm actually around people, I am. As far as doing stuff like this, well, this, isn't, this is a comfort zone for me because I like drawing. And I, you know, I like the idea of people doing artwork and that type of thing. So this is very easy for me. You put me into a room, and, and I'm good with small groups of people. So you put me in a room with four or five people, I'm fine. I'll have a good time, and, you know, I'm, I'm set. You put me in a room with anything more than that, and watch me try to turn invisible because that's what I'll be doing. And so Michelangelo was always appealing because everybody liked Michelangelo. He was the life of the party. Leonardo was the leader, you know, so he was always kind of trying to make sure things were getting done. Raphael was the hothead, which never really appealed to me because I'm just not that type of person. And then Donatello was always kind of the brainy one. And that's why I think I was, he was my second favorite is because he was the closest to how I actually kind of operated in the world. But the person you want to be is you want to be the fun time person. You want to be the person everybody wants to be around. And that was Michelangelo. And also for the fact that I do like nunchucks. And, you know, so, so Michelangelo was always my favorite one. And then, like I said, Donatello is a, circ- uh, a close second. Because I always feel like those are the two key people. Like, yeah, Leonardo's the leader. You have to have a leader. I get it. You know, I'm going to add some shadows right around the nose here because I feel like there would be shadows right there. Just around the nostril. So we'll just add those in. But yeah, Michelangelo. And so, yeah, I always, I, I always drew the turtles. They were always kind of my go-to. Most artists have certain characters, whether it's ones they've made themselves or ones that they like that are kind of go-to drawing, you know, go-to characters that they like to just do almost as a kind of pass-the-time exercise. And that's what the turtles were for me. I would just kind of just draw them whenever I felt like just doodling something and I didn't have anything particular in mind or anything that I really was working on differently, I would just go back to the turtles, which is not a bad thing. I actually have no issues with that. I think everybody, you should, you should pick a character, whether it's a Ninja Turtle or whether it's a Pokemon of some kind, that's a pretty easy one because Pokemon are simple forms. And those are things you just doodle and you do, that's where you kind of play around with, with dumb little things like, okay, take say Jigglypuff and have Jigglypuff riding a bicycle even though that makes no sense. I think that's fun stuff to do. Yeah. So, so yes, my history with the turtles goes back a long, long way. So, yeah, I'm going to get that Calabunga collection because I always liked the arcade game. That was always a fun game. And both arcade games, uh, the first one and then, uh, what is it, Turtles in Time, I think is the other one. They're both on there. So, and my wife likes beat-em-ups. And we, we finished Shredder's Revenge pretty quickly because it is a little bit on the shorter side. Great game, but shorter. And so doing some more Turtle stuff would be fun. And, I, and she remembers the arcade game, too, playing that. That and the Simpsons game. Those were, the, those were kind of the big... Were there other ones? I really remember the Simpsons fighting game or beat-em-up game, which most people who remember arcades remember. And then the Turtles game. Those were kind of the big two. Everybody always wanted to play those. Because they were both very popular, they were both very colorful, they were well-made games, so not really all that difficult to figure out why people wanted to play them, because they were actually really well-made, and they were well-suited to the arcade, because, well, the Turtles game was four-player, I sort of feel like, was The Simpsons only a four-player? Oh, and the X-Men, the the X-Men game was really good, too, that was a really popular one. I guess The Simpsons must have been four players, too. I don't know why I kept thinking it was five. But I don't think it was. I think it was only a four-player. But I don't, I don't actually remember. I remember the game and, and levels from the game, like the crusty the Clown Balloon. But I don't actually remember how many people played. And let's see, there was... So Bart, of course, his special weapon in that was the skateboard. Uh, Marge used a vacuum. I 
remember what Homer's special. I never played Homer. I remember I played. I played Bart, but I actually think I played Marge a lot because I think her vacuum was like a pretty good weapon. I don't. I don't remember. I seem to remember playing Marge a lot, and not playing really almost anybody else. Homer might have just used his stomach. He might have just gut hit everybody. I don't remember now. I'd have to go look. But um, also a great game. But that was really kind of it. So Simpsons, the X Men game, and the X Men game was. Don't get me wrong, I like it a lot. I remember playing it a lot because I was an X-Men fan. And uh, in particular, I liked Nightcrawler's super ability, which I think a lot of people did. Nightcrawler, if I remember, was a pretty popular pick on that game as far as which character to use. Because his ability had him just warping all over the map. It was great. You know, these should have shadows, shouldn't they? Yes, they should. So we're going to add them right now. Just going to put some shadows in here. But, yeah, those were the three big ones. And then, you know, later on came some of the other... When, when the Street Fighter stuff all took off, then you had things like... Stuff like... Um, well, what was that game called? It was the... It was like... Well, it was Marvel vs. Street Fighter or something like that because I remember... I remember getting my... Uh, my butt beat by this kid who was using Iron Man with his superpower, and boy, was he good. And he destroyed me really quickly multiple times. Because he was a lot younger, so I figured, oh, okay, I can probably beat this kid. Nope, wrong, wrong. I was thrashed quite thoroughly multiple times by that kid. I remember that kid's face very clearly because I could not believe. I mean, he had to be, that kid had to be 10 years younger than me, and he destroyed me. Just goes to show, you never know. So, yeah, those were, those were fun games. So, yeah, I'm going to get the Cowabunga collection, and we will be playing some very, very old school turtle fighting games. Probably to, to try to keep our minds off the super heat that's going to be coming. So we'll play through that stuff. Yeah. So yes, I always have a soft spot for the turtles because they were some of the first really what I would call adult comics I ever read. They were some of the, the first characters I really felt like I had a handle on. You know, as far as as far as characters that aren't traditionally easy to draw like mickey mouse mickey mouse is three circles and then a couple more circles inside the three circles so you can you can you can master the mickey mouse drawing you know the the, the mickey mouse imagery pretty quickly i mean even people who are non-artists can generally once you explain and show them how the circles are formed almost anybody can draw mickey mouse so those, that's sort of an easy character well, intentionally so it's supposed to be an easy character to draw whereas something like the turtles it's not, I'm not going to say it's, it's particularly difficult, but there's more to it. There's more to drawing a turtle than just mastering three circles. Really, for me, it became three parts, which was uh, basically the headband and then the part of the face above and below the headband. That's really what the turtle is, you know, to the point where I can probably actually do it very quickly right here with the dark gray. So basically, turtle is simple. You do turtle, you do the headband, right? Okay. And I'm doing this a little differently because normally I'd be using a thinner pencil. Do your eyes. So that's part one. You can do a little shadow around the eyes if you want to give them some kind of, you know, depth to it, right? Then this is the easy part. It's a dome. And again, you want to do a little bit of shadowing in here. And you can just do a little dotting stuff in there. And then this is the part where you kind of can do whatever you want. But I always drew it like this. I always did this. And did that, and then I did a little teeth down here, and a teeth down there. And I mean, that's it. That's it. That's a turtle right there. And then again, you do some shading here. Oh, I'm sorry. There is a fourth part. My mistake. And that is you have to have the headband flowing in the wind. There we go. Headband. Yeah. There. That's it. That's the turtle. Oh, well, I zoomed in. I'm not going to give this rat a turtle tattoo. That's the turtle right there. That's the way I've drawn it my whole life. Simple. I mean, you know, little time. Sometimes I would make the face more squarish, that type of thing. Little, little details would be different, but I mean, basically, that's the turtle I've drawn since I was. I don't even remember how young. Like I said, pre-high school, like grade school. So, which here is like sixth grade. I've been drawing that turtle head my my most of my drawing life. So that's that's why I can just knock that out in two seconds without really even having to think about it. And that's why I love the turtles, because I figured out how to draw them. And that's not a complex drawing. That's really, like I said, I said three parts, it's four parts. I always, I always forget about the flowing headband until I'm done with it. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to have the headband. But, um, yeah. 
And on that note, I think we'll stop here. I've got the grays in. And yeah, I've got to do some more shadow stuff here. But that's basically, yeah, so we're, we're, we're moving along with this. So yeah, we'll keep working on this, on whatever the next stream is. Which again, with the heat coming, I don't know what that's going to be. But yeah, that's where we are. So hope you enjoyed this episode of Turtle Talk and also some Alley Rat. Um, and again, as a reminder, now that we're at the end, anybody who has kids, I said this at the top, but I don't think anybody was watching at that point. And um, I mean, if you're watching this later, you probably will have already heard it, but I'll repeat it now for people because this won't be released on the YouTube channel for a little while. And this would actually give me material for other ones. If you have children and you want to have your kids do a squiggle and send it to me uh, using the Gmail address ozoneartfoundry at gmail.com, I would be happy to actually take their squiggles and draw on them. And that way they could either draw along, you know, whether it's on a stream or later on watching a video. And as I said at the beginning, if you want to have them do it digitally, if you have a, a tablet and a stylus, and send me, you know, like a screenshot or an export of it, that's fine. If you want to just have them do it on a piece of paper and, you know, take a picture of it with your, with your phone or your camera or whatever and send me that, it does not have to be precise, doesn't have to be exact, but you can send me those squiggles and just make sure you put a subject of, subject with something that has the word squiggle. Actually, I don't care if you want to do it as an adult either. You want me, you want to send me a squiggle as an adult, what do I care? All ages, what's well, not restricted to kids. Whoever, if you want to send me a squiggle, whether it's your squiggle or your kid's squiggle or your sister's squiggle or the person that works at the local grocery squiggle, whatever, or one you find on the street, I don't care. Send me an image of it and I will draw that on that squiggle and that way you can follow along or follow along with your kids or whatever. I will probably end up doing my own squiggles as well because I don't know how fast anybody's going to send me anything. Um, but I'll also put this probably on Twitter and say, hey, if you want to send me some squiggles, go for it, and I will draw, and that way you can watch along. Um, other than that, if you are up in this heat, in anywhere where this kind of heat dome is going to be, then stay cool and stay hydrated because it is going to be extraordinarily nasty, and uh, I don't want anybody to have to suffer in heat because that is just terrible so that's what i'm going to be doing is staying inside out of the sun around lots of water and trying to just not melt so i don't know when the next stream is going to be but it probably won't be for probably not until next week because i think the heat's going to break actually next tuesday so it might just be next tuesday like normal maybe a couple days after if the heat sticks around it just we'll just have to play it by ear in any event i uh, hope you enjoyed watching go create something Stay cool, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you again on the next stream. Good night, everybody. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, everybody. All right.